This is Get Real with Bob and Stacy, the show that helps you learn about the mortgage and real estate markets. Get the inside scoop from their expert list of guests and have some fun along the way. Now, here's Bob Callagher and Stacy Alcorn. Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy, and you're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment. Our first guest today is Mike Share, co-founder and chief executive, I'm sorry, chief sales architect at Frontline Selling. Welcome to the show, Mike. Thanks, Bob. Good to be back here. Yeah, we're excited to have you back. Uh, Mike Sheriff, for anybody that listened to last time, he has a website. It's FrontlineSelling.com. Frontline Selling makes sales organizations wildly successful by providing them with the most effective ways to engage their B2B buyer. Staccato instantly creates a multi-touch prospecting platform and provides unprecedented optics into the metrics that predict sales pipelines. The software they own, which snaps seamlessly into Salesforce and is available on the App Exchange, organizes, prioritizes, and guides prospecting activity with a methodology based on the scientific analysis of nearly 2 million outreach repetitions. It can also be delivered as a managed service. Clients routinely generate two to four times more sales opportunities with key decision makers. So basically, you're in the business of helping salespeople reach out to the right prospects and turning them into business. First, tell us again about how exactly your program works. Sure, Stacy. And uh, yes, that's exactly right. It's about it's about helping those salespeople uh, get more oppor- get more opportunities. Every sale in any sort of B two B sale, it's going to take you ten meetings, conference calls, proposals, demos, whatever it is to close the deal. You can't do the 10th until you do the 9th. You can't do any of them until you do the 1st. One of the biggest challenges that sales organizations have is getting, they have a great product, great solution, tell a great story, but it's just they they need somebody to tell that story to. It's getting to the decision maker. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the way Staccato works is it is a methodology and a technology that guides, it's a guided prospecting solution that when you follow the, the process, the outcome is you get way more first meaningful conversations, meaningful interactions with the right people. Uh, generally, like you said, two to four, four X, the number of first meaningful conversations. Hmm. That's kind of cool because it sounds like you can make any salesperson into a rock star. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's really what it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter whether you're a 21 year veteran or a mm-hmm. 21 years old, right? Want to, you, you know, salespeople. You know, sales is, is salespeople when they're prospecting, particularly. Uh, you know, most people go through sort of the guesswork. There's a lot of decision points, right? Who do I contact? What do I say? If I call Stacy and I get her voicemail, should I leave a message? What message should I leave? When should I follow up? How many times should I follow up? Each one of these decisions, decision points, is also a potential point of failure. What Staccato does is it it removes the guesswork and the trial and mostly error through that process Mm -hmm. and gives you two things, the right answer to those questions and the right way to do do those things. So, for example, one of the right answers is, should I leave Stacy a voicemail? The answer is yes but I can leave a good one or a bad one, mm-hmm. right? Knowing the difference between the two and actually being to, building sort of the muscle memory to make sure that you leave a, a good construct of a voicemail each and every time, Staccato is all about not only what to do, but how best to do it. This is so cool. Anytime I end up sitting with somebody trying to sell me something, I really try to analyze it and say, how the heck did this person get in front of me? <laughs> Seriously, because I, I'm so busy. I don't have time to, I don't have time for sales pitches. So they got to do something special in order to get in front of me to sell something. So your software would predict the things that this person would have to do in order to get in front of me. Tell us about... Um, the new platform you have called People Links, and how that is fitting into the product suite that you offer. Oh uh, well, we're excited about. We, just a couple of weeks ago, we acquired uh, a, a great company called People Links. The platform fits perfectly into what we're doing with Staccato. What and the way it, it, it if you think about Staccato as 
the guided prospecting solution that that guides users through how do you get that first appointment, similar to uh, getting that first appointment when you talk about the sort of the advent and the and, and all the interest in social selling, salespeople, that's sort of been the wild, wild west. Salespeople guess their way through social selling activities. Uh, you know, when should I connect with Bob mm-hmm. on LinkedIn or what should I, you know, should I, you, you know, should I follow him or tweet, tweet this content to, to Stacy or to the marketplace? When should I do it? How should I do it? So just like we've done with Staccato in terms of prospecting efforts, People Inks is a best practice methodology of what to do and then a, a technology platform to guide the, the salesperson through optimum social selling activities. So not only but not only just in the you know sort of the you know the lead gen stage, but all throughout the sales process. Hmm. So it's a it's a complete guided selling platform that that drives game changing outcomes for for sales organizations. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So tell us about so some of the traditional stuff, both Bob and I have a lot of salespeople on our teams and some of the traditional stuff that salespeople do when they get slow in our industry is cold call. So is cold calling dead? Absolutely not, Stacy. Mm-hmm. Um, cold calling's not dead. Um, you know, there's this raging debate if you go on, you know, read blogs, blog posts, or go on LinkedIn and some of the discussion boards and things like that. If you really want to stir the pot, right, just post something, you know, is cold calling dead, mm-hmm. right, or – you know, social selling is the way to go. And, um, you know, cold, all selling is social. It's always been social. It, it, there's just different communication protocols. So is it, it's not, you know, it's not one or the other. Is it cold calling or is it, uh, is it social selling? We say why not all the above, whether it's digital selling through email or, or other right. electronic communications through uh, through human to human voice communications or through social platforms, all selling is social and you you need to communicate across the spectrum in a coordinated way because different people respond differently not not ev- not everybody picks up their phone but not everybody ignores the phone. Not everybody engages socially uh, um, but not every uh, everybody ignores social. So it's all a little bit, and, and knowing how to mix it together, uh, which is, again, which is why the People Links, which was a business partner of ours prior to the acquisition, is such a strategic uh, component to what we're doing. Because right now, this is the only solution that goes across the human-to-human digital and social platforms for a complete, uh, uh, complete outreach effort. Hmm. This is interesting. Just for the first time ever, I hired a cold caller to do my recruiting calls. And I've always, for 14 years, I've done a, my own style of recruiting where I leave messages for people. I email them, etc. The guy I hired is a master cold caller. He doesn't leave messages. He'll keep calling you until you pick up the phone. What's really interesting is I'm still doing my style of recruiting. He's still doing his style. And we're getting totally different people. Like, there's no overlap. And that goes to the point you just said, that everybody reacts different to a different type of contact that they're receiving. That That's exactly right. I mean, we're just, you know, some people are audio learners. Right. right? So voicemail is important to them, right? Other people um, are very email-centric. Mm-hmm. You, you know you interact with these people. They read emails and mark them as unread as right. if they're trying to fool, fool themselves, right? right. Um, <laughs> there are other people, even within an organization, as you're navigating, some people give their administrative assistants a lot of domain over their calendar and have a lot of a trust and it's a close relationship. Other people prefer to, you know, kind of, you know, do things like, you know, book their travel and schedule their appointments themselves. Different people respond to different stimuli. That's why having casting a wide net across multiple touch points and allowing the person to respond by analyzing and paying attention to how they respond, they give you the indication of how they prefer to communicate. Nobody says, hi, I'm Stacy. Mm-hmm. I'm an email person. Right. right. 
And mm-hmm. it's interesting, Stacey, you had, inter- you, you had mentioned, because you're very conscious about this, right, mm-hmm. is when people get to you, you then think about, say, hey, how did they get to me? Right. And I would, arg- I would argue that, you know, it, that you probably really don't know because you weren't paying attention mm-hmm. to even more of the subliminal pieces. It could have been the fact that that person got to you because maybe they emailed Bob and right. Bob forwarded it to you two weeks ago, mm-hmm. but you kind of glanced at it and you roll your eyes every time Bob forwards you stuff. So, that does happen. But then when you got <laughs> called, it, it kind of sparked, right? Yes. And, and so th- that's the thing. We're just not conscious. It's it's the same reason why we buy why we buy chewing gum at the grocery store checkout counter. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just sort of subliminal impulsive mm-hmm. as well. Right. Huh. So interesting. So you've been in an expert on sales conversion forever. So what have you done throughout, let's just say the past decade or two decades, when most of the world, almost every sales funnel is somehow um, affected by the economy, you say it's possible to exceed quotas, increase sales, regardless of what's happening in an economic market. How is that possible? Oh, it's it's absolutely possible. I mean, when there's an eco- economic downturn, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean all commerce stops. Mm-hmm. What it means is that is that the marginal performers can't succeed. Mm-hmm. The the average performers don't succeed, and that's why it's really important to have exceptional performance, right? In, right. in terms of um, you know being focused and disciplined. And just as an example, without getting, if, if let's say whatever it is you sell, you sell into a billion dollar industry, right? The industry is a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. And let's just say that during this time period of time, there's a downturn. And the downturn means that this industry is no longer growing. It shrunk by 10%, right. which is a calamity, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Well, guess what, Stacy? It's still a $900 million market. Right. Okay, so it's still a big market, but that just means you need to compete more effectively. And so focus and discipline mm-hmm. are, are, uh, is what's going to survive in, in difficult times. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. And potentially there's more business because you have a 10 percent downturn, but 30 percent of the marginal producers fall off, which increases the business for everybody else. That's exactly right. That, that is exactly right. So what are your top three tips for every salesperson, regardless of industry, to help them reach a prospect faster? Um, so um, so the first and foremost is, is, is when you're reaching out, it's not about, it, it, you know, number one is it's not about the product, mm-hmm. right? It's about the business solution you solve. So stay accountable to outcomes. Mm-hmm. Okay. The second one is being curious. Right? It's not about you. It's about them. It's being curious. When you're, when you're curious, you can't assume. Mm. And we all know what happens when you assume, right? Mm-hmm. And, then, and then the last tip is, I call it just one more. Research one more account. Connect with one more person. Make one more phone call. Mm. If you just do one more, when you think you're done, you, at the end of the day, if you just do one more each and every day, that one more makes all the difference in the world. Hmm. That's interesting. I have a question for you. We only have a couple more minutes, but as far as the people links piece of your business, which sounds like it is using social media, I can't get over the number of LinkedIn emails I get where people are actually trying to sell me something through an email it's like Mm. a blind email to me saying oh i would love to get together and help you with your seo i get i get probably five a day i hope your software does not do that yeah because i stopped (laughs) looking at the messages just for that same reason it's just it's basically junk mail. there's never a good email in linkedin anymore nope well so you know it, it it was described to me the other day right it would be imagine you went think about in a personal environment you went to a networking event Mm -hmm. and you walked up to somebody Mm -hmm. and you said 
and and you didn't even introduce yourself. You just said, "Hi, I'm you know, uh, hi, I do SEO conversion." Yes, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, or or you you know in in, in a networking event, mm-hmm. right? You're absolutely so right. All mm-hmm. social media is is a digital version of that. Mm-hmm. So the the idea of of you know decorum and the idea of of just communication doesn't go out the window because it's you know because you can do it a thousand people at a time or whatever it is right, right. so yeah so the the beauty of the the people links platform is it's is it's not a just a piece of technology it's a methodology of best practice hmm. so from how so how to not just connecting with people, but how to connect from sharing, not just sharing content, but how to share that content in an effective way that deals with how humans like to consume this information. So you're, you're not just, you know, you know, automating bad behavior, right. which is really yes. what, yeah. I mean, and by the way, not just social media does it. Think about things like dialers, right? right? You know, d- automated dialer. Yes, it's just a voice version of of Stacy of what you yes. just described, right? Yeah. yeah. It, now it doesn't mean dialers are bad, but it's how people implement them. Right. They can they can automate bad behavior, and that's what you have to be careful about with technology. And there's a lot of tools and technology out there for all types of things, whether it's social or sales acceleration and things like that. And you know, the it, it, you have to be careful because. A lot of times people think technology is really just the, it's just a technology uh, problem, a problem that technology can solve, right? But Mm -hmm. you can't feel like you're arming salespeople to the point where they believe they can do just about everything without doing anything. Mm -hmm. You have to know what tools and technologies and how to use them effectively. No different than communicating at a networking event, right? There's, there's, you know, the right way to, and and a proper way to, to engage somebody in a conversation. Yes. That's awesome. Mm. Well, thank you. Our time is almost up. This is Mike Scher, co-founder and chief sales architect at Frontline Selling. You can learn more about him and his business at FrontlineSelling.com. He will teach you how not to automate bad behavior. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Stacey. It's been a pleasure. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Get Real after this.